setting system preferences. Um, real, really, that says it all. This nugget is going to be about setting the system preferences on your Mac. We'll look at things like uh, network preferences, hardware preferences, some of the visual and audio preferences, um, some miscellaneous preferences. We're basically just going to walk through every single one of the system preferences that we haven't or will not be covering in another nugget uh, dedicated to a specific topic. So this is kind of all the stuff that you can configure to customize the way your Mac looks, behaves, and operates. Now we've already played with some of the system preferences on the Mac. Um, we, for example, have already looked at uh, user accounts right here. We've looked at uh, networking, which is right here. But now I just want to kind of take a quick run through of some of the most important of these system preferences panes uh, so that we can figure out exactly where all the really key configuration stuff lives. So let's start with appearance. Um, this is, it, just as the name says, just some of the basic look and feel type stuff. Um, lets you customize the overall look of buttons, um, the highlight color for text, where you want scroll arrows placed in Windows. And by and large, these settings will affect everything on the computer. You will run across a few applications. Um, some of the Microsoft Office for Mac applications are, uh, are an exception to this. Uh, because those applications don't use the system settings uh, to draw things like scroll bars and so forth. Um, but by and large, most of your applications will be affected by this. Uh, sm font smoothing, for example, um, stuff like that. Now, two ways to get back to the main screen. You can hit Show All or click Back, and that'll take us back to all of these different things. So working with these system preferences is a little bit like navigating a web page. Um, so you need to get back or show all or something else. Desktop and screensaver. Um, pick your desktop color. You've got some uh, solid colors. You can go to your pictures folder. If you've got any uh, photos that you've imported into iPhoto, you'll find all those in here. So you can pick anything you want. Uh, and then the screensaver, of course, lets you pick a screensaver. Um, configure a timeout. I have mine set to never. And you've got this little thing called hot corners. What this lets you do is configure certain corners of the screen to have different behaviors. So if you stick the mouse pointer in that corner of the screen, uh, then this will happen. And you can say, uh, sleep the display, which means shut off power to the display itself. Um, start the screensaver, disable the screensaver. That's actually kind of an, a, a neat one. If you want to have some way to quickly start the screensaver without waiting for the timeout, or if you want to leave a certain display up, maybe you're, uh, you're going to be watching a webinar or a webcast. You're not participating, so you're not going to be moving your mouse around much or typing on the keyboard, but you don't want the display going to sleep. Then you can set a hot corner to disable the screensaver. So that's kind of a neat little tool there. Uh, we've already looked at, at most of the configuration features for the dock, changing the size and magnification and so forth. Uh, and let's take a look at Exposé. Um, I have spaces enabled. This is part of the expose feature, uh, and I have it showing in the menu bar up here. So if I can switch to space number two, and everything slides over to space number two, or switch back to space number one. Well, this screen allows you to configure that. Um, I can add a row of spaces or remove a row, add a column of spaces or remove a column. So it always works out in this sort of even grid. Uh, and this is also where I can assign specific applications. So I can say, uh, let's pick a different application. It's going to open up the Applications menu, and I'm going to go find the Mail app. There it goes. I always want my Mail application to show up in space number one. So that even if I'm in space number four and I start Mail, it's going to dock itself into space number one. Um, I like to keep my Mail and my calendar kind of those, those daily productivity apps in one space, so I can always get back to it. And that leaves me the other spaces to work with for uh, whatever applications I need to be using. And then Expose, again, gives you another way to get to those hot corners. These, this is the exact same set of settings. Um, and then Expose will let you configure the shortcuts. Uh, so to show all application windows, it's F10 and so forth. Uh, some international settings, it's just formats you know, things like formatting, uh, what languages you want to have available, um, what formats you want, dates and times and numbers and currency and so forth, and any auxiliary input menus. This is primarily for uh, Asian languages like Japanese and Chinese, but you can see here all your different language choices. 
And finally, uh, we looked at Spotlight, which is the built-in search functionality. Uh, so this is a, a way to get to uh, Spotlight's configuration, so you can tell it which order and which application. So if uh, when you search in Spotlight, which is done with this little icon up here in the menu bar, if you don't want it searching through system preferences, then you can turn that off. Um, if you do want it searching through documents, but you want anything found in, in the documents folder to show up first in Spotlight, then you can drag those up. And this just lets you sort of configure those preferences. Now on hardware, Bluetooth lets you work with any built-in Bluetooth if your Mac has built-in Bluetooth, or if uh, you don't have built-in Bluetooth but you have an external Bluetooth adapter, and here's where you would configure that. Uh, CDs and DVDs, this is just uh, inserting some basic preferences. If you insert a music CD or a picture CD or a video CD or DVD, what applications open um, automatically for that? Uh, displays is something I actually have up here in my menu bar, and this allows me to quickly change the resolution. This is great if you've got a laptop and you take it around and you plug it into projectors and you do a lot of presenting with it. Um, right now I've only got the built-in color LCD, but every single display that is detected will show up with a separate list of these, so you can change the resolution on them independently. Um, and then you can click Detect Displays to uh, automatically re-detect. Um, you have to do this a lot, for example, if you've got your laptop on and then you plug it into a projector, um, sometimes the Mac won't pick up that, that instant ad of the display. So you can tell it to re-detect displays and it'll uh, go find them and it'll list. It won't list every single resolution that each device is capable of, it'll list the most common ones. And clicking on Display Preferences, or going to System Preferences and getting into it here, uh, lets you see every possible resolution. Now if you've got more than one display plugged in, you're actually going to get multiple copies of this window. So you can see this one is for my Color LCD. I'd have another window for an external projector, and so that allows me to select all the different resolutions, even ones that the device might not support. Uh, so when you, you pick a different display here, it'll actually ask, okay, I've changed it, do you want to keep these settings? It defaults to no, and it'll time out after a few seconds. Uh, so if you do pick a display setting that's not compatible with the display device, all you need to do is just let the Mac sit for a few seconds, and it'll revert back to the last one that was working. Energy saver. Um, just a few things here. This isn't nearly as complicated as uh, power management on some computers, but uh, you can set different settings for power, adapter, and battery mode. Uh, you've got kind of presets here. Uh, better energy savings, better performance. I usually go with custom. Um, and this just says put the computer to sleep when it is inactive for how long? I have it set to never. And put the display to sleep when the computer is inactive. And put the hard drive to sleep when possible. Uh, there's a couple options. Automatically reduce the brightness of the display before sleep, which kind of gives you a visual cue that sleep is about to occur, uh, and show battery status in the menu bar. That's up here. You can also make that happen on a schedule. Um, and this is kind of neat. You can say, I want you to start up or wake every day at, oh, let's say 7 a.m. before I get to the office, and sleep every day at uh, 6 p.m. And this will automatically make the computer do that so that you can have it sleep and save a little bit of power without having to worry about it. And that doesn't shut it down, it actually sleeps. So if it does sh go to sleep, uh, you can come back in at any time and just kind of hit the space bar on the keyboard and it'll wake right back up. You can change it to restart or shut down every day too. If it is shut down and you have the startup configured, that will still work. Um, it'll automatically start up from a, a completely shut down state, which is also a, a nice feature to have. keyboard and mouse. Now these things are going to differ. Um, I'm actually using my computer's built-in trackpad, so you don't see a setting for that here. If you have a mouse plugged in, then you'll get mouse settings. Uh, but this is where you can configure global shortcuts, um, configure your Bluetooth mouse or keyboard. If you have one, you can see that I don't, otherwise it would, it would show up here. Uh, and configure your built-in keyboard. Um, for backlit keyboards, you can have the Mac automatically illuminate the keyboard in low light conditions. Um, some Mac laptops, for example, have backlit keyboards. So that's a nice feature. If you're uh, sitting on a plane, it's a little bit dark, you can see the screen obviously, but the screen might not be casting enough light to actually light up the keys. And so having that backlight on lets you use the computer. It's also great, again, for doing presentations. If you're in a darkened room, uh, so you can see the keyboard to hit shortcut keys during your presentation. Now again, I'm using the trackpad, so that actually has a separate um, set of configuration options. 
and you can decide all the different things. Um, these features, again, will differ from Mac to Mac because some Macs support multi-touch uh, trackpads, such as a three-finger or a two-finger touch. Um, others do not. So here's where you configure all the different things that your trackpad can actually do. Uh, printing and faxing we're actually going to uh, cover separately. We're going to cover that in a different nugget. Uh, that'll be nugget number six, uh, which if you've been watching these in order, you've already done. So we've done those. And next up is sound. Um, let's start over here. Uh, input. This is just what device is being used for input. On most Mac laptops and most iMacs have an internal microphone. Uh, if you've got an external mic, then you can select that. And this just lets you configure the input level. Um, test it. You can talk to it, and this little bar here will, will advance up. Uh, and then you can configure the output volume for that input. Uh, and then you can also configure your default output device here. And again, you can always get to the output volume feature or just mute it. Uh, and you can show that in the menu bar as well. So you can get up here and configure your output volume or mute it. And then sound effects is just the, the basic built-in system sound effects that happen for different events. Uh, so you can change all those to whatever you want. Configure the alert volume separately from the overall output volume. And uh, so those are the hardware settings. Under Internet and Network, we've already covered Network, so let's take a look at MobileMe. Uh, you do need to subscribe to the MobileMe service in order for this to be useful. Um, you would click uh, Sign In to create to connect this Mac to a particular MobileMe account, Sign Out to disconnect. Um, you can get some account details. Um, your Mac can sync. You can have uh, pretty much as many Macs as you want to. I mean, practically speaking, your desktop and a laptop, say, sync their information up to MobileMe. So you can sync your mail, your contacts, and so forth. And that kind of gives you a central place in the cloud, so to speak, um, that you can keep all that stuff, and it'll come down to all of the different applications. Um, if you don't have a MobileMe app or a subscription, then that little applet is useless. We are going to cover sharing separately. Uh, sharing is nugget number eight. So if you've already viewed these in order, then you've seen that. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at QuickTime preferences here. Um, not a ton on here. Uh, if you're, you're using the base QuickTime player that comes with the operating system, uh, then this is where you would enter your registration code if you upgraded to QuickTime Pro for some reason, if you decided you wanted that. Uh, and then the rest of these things, you know, once you're viewing QuickTime in a browser, play automatically. Um, how do you want QuickTime to update itself? Um, streaming speed for QuickTime. This is where you tell it what sort of connection you're at. I like to leave this at automatic, especially on a laptop, um, because a laptop tends to move from place to place to place, and its uh, network connection changes. By telling QuickTime what your network connection looks like, it can select the best streaming sections or uh, settings once you are streaming video over the internet. Uh, and then just a couple of advanced things here. Okay, so moving on to the system settings. We've already done accounts. Date and time is pretty straightforward. Do you want to show the date and the time in the menu bar? And if you do show it, how do you want it displayed? Digital, analog, 24-hour clock, and so forth. You can even have it announce the time on the hour. Um, this is truly annoying, but it's fun to do at work. Uh, if you're going to have your Mac sitting at work, um, announce it on the quarter hour, and you can customize the voice settings. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Um, you can tell it to use a specific male or female voice or just use the system voice and it will actually say it is now 10.15. Um, and for a little while everyone at all the desks around you will wonder what's going on uh, and then they will become incredibly annoyed and uh, possibly pay you money to shut that off. So that's a fun one to know about. Parental controls, not going to use this at work so much, but you can set up parental controls. Um, the reason you don't see anything here is because I've only got one user account on this computer. So this relies on each child having their own account, and then you can configure uh, certain things they can and cannot do, certain websites they can visit and so forth. Uh, software update, we'll come to later, uh, different nugget. Uh, speech. Um, this is where you can decide what the system voice is. You saw earlier on Announce the Time where we just let it use the system voice. Um, this is where we're deciding what that is, how fast it speaks. You can play a little sample. And uh, where you would use this is uh, in things like VoiceOver, which is under Universal Access. Uh, and you can have it speak the selected key when, when it's pressed. Oops, speak selected text when you, you set this shortcut key. Um, announce when an application requires your attention. Announce when alerts are displayed, and so forth. Uh, startup disk. 
On most Macs with one disk and one operating system, you're not going to use this. Uh, and you can see that that's the case here. I have Mac OS X installed on the Mac hard drive, and that is the system that will start. Um, later on in our, our last nugget, number 18, we'll look at Boot Camp, which is a way to partition your drive uh, into multiple volumes so that each one can contain a different operating system, including Microsoft Windows. Well, if you've got that, then from within your Mac, this is where you would go to select the Windows volume, hit restart and restart the computer in Windows. Uh, there's also this network startup if you have a, a network boot server on your network. And Time Machine, um, something that uh, we will talk about a, a little bit later um, under backup and recovery in nugget number 10, so we're not going to spend it all now, but that's where you'll find that. And here's that universal access that I mentioned earlier. This is for folks who may have a, a visual impairment or an audio impairment, and you'll see that it automatically jumps things up to a gigantic font. Uh, so you can turn on voiceover, which causes the Mac to read everything that shows up on the screen. So if someone's having trouble reading it themselves, then you can hear it aloud in text-to-speech mode. Uh, you can turn on zooming to make portions of the screen bigger, um, force the display to go to different modes, you can have it flash the screen when an alert sound occurs so that someone is getting a visual cue uh, to something that would normally only be an audible alert. Here's what the screen flash looks like. Just goes by kind of real quick. Um, on the keyboard, you can configure various keyboard assist modes, sticky keys, slow keys, and so forth. And then you've also got some uh, people, uh, people who have difficulty using the mouse or trackpad. You've got some options to help them out, too. And then finally, under Other, this will differ depending on exactly what hardware accessories you've installed on your computer. Um, this is a place for third-party control panel or system preferences applets to go so that you can configure those things. Um, I have a Targus Media Presenter, for example. Uh, no, I don't want to download the latest version of the software. Uh, I don't have the device connected at the moment, so it's not able to uh, do any configuration for me, but this is where I would come to do that. Um, similarly, I have a, a Wacom touch tablet, and this is where I would configure some of those settings. So those are the main system preferences for the Mac. Um, some applications, uh, actually most applications, will have their own separate preferences, and you'll find those under the Applications menu bar item uh, under Preferences. But those system preferences are the system-wide preferences. Many of those system preferences are machine-wide, which means they're going to affect everyone who uses the computer. Um, others are per user, but not very many of them. But, uh, just a few of them, like universal access and so forth, things that you know you would expect to be different from user to user. Most of them, however, are machine-wise. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're configuring those. And remember that you may be setting things for every user of that Mac. In this nugget, we've looked at all the different system preferences that you can configure on your Mac. Now, we skipped a few, uh, ones that we've covered in previous nuggets or ones that are going to be covered specifically and in-depth in an upcoming nugget, but we did touch on network preferences, uh, hardware preferences, visual preferences, miscellaneous preferences, really, again, anything that might configure the behavior or appearance or or uh, anything else about the Mac. A lot of system-wide stuff, a couple per-user things like universal access and so forth. So now you should know where to go configure just about any of the major settings that the Mac has to offer. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.